This show is brought to you by Pivex, private instant verified transactions. With its groundbreaking zero coin staking and masternodes, Pivex is the top privacy currency. Feel free to trade some on Binance or Bittrex. And for more information, go to www.pivex.org. Hello and welcome to another episode of ITK Crypto. And we've got uh, a guest that uh, Carl and I have been working with ourselves for, well, must be well, it's well over a year now. And he's from Block X Africa. It's Alicia Awusu. Hey, ciao. Alicia, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you, Tom and Carl. Thanks for having me on your show. Happy to be here. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's me, Tom White, and we've got Cryptosi uh, alongside us as well. All going well with you, Cryptosi? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Um, yeah, looking forward to this one. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We, we, you know, we've had regular listeners to the show will know that we have guests. We've had guests from, from all around the world. Apart from, we actually haven't had anyone on from Africa yet. So this will be really interesting to hear what Alicia has to say about about crypto in Africa. And Alicia, if you just start by telling us a little bit more about yourself and your, your background prior to getting into crypto. Okay, sure. So before I got into cryptocurrencies, I was working with uh, open source societies like Mozilla and Wikipedia, which used to do a lot of volunteerism uh, with those two uh, groups. Uh, I used to hold uh, Mozilla meetups in Accra and um, Kumasi. And then I also uh, helped Wikipedia, like the Wikipedia community over here. I did a couple of articles, uh, was part of a group that organized meetups. And then I also started the first Firefox OS blog. Most people might not remember how Firefox OS is, but it was Mozilla's attempt to build um, a mobile phone operating system that was based of the Firefox browser. So basically everything was going to run on the web. Uh, that project died, but when it was alive, I used to have a blog called Firefox OS Central. And that's what I was doing uh, until I met cryptocurrency and I switched camp from um, blogging about crypto, I'm sorry, blogging about open source related software to cryptocurrency, which is, which is also open source if you consider Bitcoin the first cryptocurrency. So yeah, that was what I was doing before I got into cryptocurrency. And what uh, what project have you worked on? <coughs> uh, pardon me, uh, since getting into cryptocurrency, and and how have you found them? Okay, great. So um, before getting into okay, since I got into cryptocurrency, sorry, I have worked um with Dash. wasn't part of the team, but worked as a committee member who owned the first Dash commercial blog. Uh, when I got to cryptocurrencies, most of the blogs were centered around Bitcoin. And back then, it was pretty hard for altcoins to get coverage by the big uh, cryptocurrency blogs. For example, Cointelegraph would take ages to talk about cryptocurrency, even if you got into the top 10 back then. So I was like, great, then these other currencies have to get something on their own. So I started the Dash Times or Dash Pre Magazine. We changed name twice. So... Yeah, it's, it's either one of those things, depending on when you got to know us. And at Dash, yeah, I was doing that until I moved to Pivx. Um, was part of the Pivx team before, during, and immediately after the rebranding. Was part of the group of people in charge of marketing. Was doing this with uh, Chad, who is currently still at Pivx. And then after that, I moved on to start a marketing agency called Token Media. Well, we're helping various cryptocurrencies raise funds and get some money um, through ICOs or uh, any other form of like investment. So basically, we were the people in charge of marketing for these projects. And with Token Media, we did some great stuff. But then I had to quit because I had to focus on school. So after that, after that, then. I started BlockX Africa, which is what I'm currently working on. Well, that, the thing is, Alicia, there. When I listen to that, I think all these things that you've been that you've been involved in, I think, right, okay, you must be, you know, quite old. But then you say that you had to go and finish school. All right, so just let the listeners know how old you are. I turned 18 two days ago. Yeah, I, I got into cryptocurrency at the age of 16. Yeah, 16. 
right, well, for, first of all, happy birthday for, for two days ago. And it, it is quite a quite astonishing for you to say that you've you've done that much at this age and cryptosi how impressed have you been that that someone so young can have helped out in so many projects and have actually done plenty before even getting into crypto yeah it's it's uh, when i found out how old alicia is or was at the time it was definitely younger than 16 because i i when i met him it was over two years ago. So it would have been definitely 15. And it's like, um, it's weird because we were talking and I was saying, Oh, um, if this project goes well, then we'll go, we'll all go to, I think we decided we'd all go to Las Vegas or something and go to the, the clubs out there and party and, and celebrate. And then, and one day Alicia turned to me and he said, Oh, well, I, I don't think I could get in. <laughs> and, that, and that was when it all came to light that he was, that he was so young, but the, the, the way he conducted himself and the things that he'd already achieved, I was under the impression that he was at least, at least my age, probably older. So yeah, it is, it's, um, it's quite some story to, <laughs> to have done so much at such a young age. Well, no one would have thought he's your age, Crypto. I mean, crypto, I mean you know, he doesn't sound 55. I mean, come on. But uh, crypto, <laughs> have, you, have you found your age to have been, uh, has it hindered you in any way or has it actually helped you in any way? Um, both, both ways. Um, for like, when it comes to the limitations, the, the couple, because I have yeah. had some, yeah, I've had some great like offers doing some work for some people, but at that time, I couldn't sign contracts. So basically, yeah, it's not possible. Um, then we had this whole wave of KYC AML over exchanges. So m- most of my money got like money on exchanges. And I'm going to say this on this podcast. No one should ever keep their money on exchanges. That was a bad like decision for me. Um, my, my money on exchanges got logged up because I couldn't fill the KYC forms. For example, uh, Tezos, I was part of the um, investment, the, the ICO round. And after the um, ICO, Tezos comes back and says they are going to be doing KYC for everybody that invested before they released the money. And up to now, still battling with this KYC stuff. Finally, can fill the KYC forms. I fill the KYC forms and there are still problems. Um, but that's another issue for another day. But the whole point is with my age, uh, the things that like I couldn't do, because of the legal like limitations for people who are under 18 around the world uh, and some people wouldn't just want to get into business with their mind or it's 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 risky and i understand them but when it comes to the merits uh, people like to tell a good story so i've had some free press because of my age uh, and some people like to work with relatively younger people and that has also helped me because I've also gotten into places because of my age. Basically, it's a double-edged sword. It, it has helped and hasn't helped at the same time. But yeah, uh, finally, I, I can do stuff. So I'm, I'm happy about the experience again. It, it has been a great learning experience. Well, in that case, that brings us on to, to Block X Africa. Tell us uh, exactly what it is and, and what it's built for. Okay, so... Let me get to a simple explanation, then I, I expatiate on it. So BlockX Africa is a company or a startup that seeks to push cryptocurrency adoption in Africa, starting from Ghana through education. So there are, there are two ways to look at this. Now, every time there's new technology, there's a learning curve. Now, the learning curve happens pretty rapidly in most parts of the world, but in Africa, it takes time. So for example, when computers became a thing and computers started getting into the African continent, people had to attend something called computer classes in order to be able to use the computer and understand how the computer works. The same way cryptocurrency is a new form of technology where people have to understand and learn how to use it. So we are going to get people to be able to get that particular education needed to push adoption in the African continent. Because you can't expect people to use something they don't understand. And the thing is, Africa has been tagged as one of the biggest places where cryptocurrency can have an impact. But cryptocurrencies have been around since 2009. And the impact cryptocurrencies have had on the African continent is not as much as we wish it could be or as much as we thought it would be. 
And one of the main problems is the fact that people don't understand cryptocurrency. The regulators themselves, people who are supposed to regulate, people who are claiming cryptocurrencies is a scam on the African continent, who are saying don't invest in cryptocurrencies, those people themselves don't even understand what cryptocurrency is. Uh, probably they, they don't even know there's something called blockchain. It might sound like an exaggeration, but I've spoken to people who have very, very strong stance on cryptocurrency, who don't know what cryptocurrency actually is. So the whole point is, if we want to push for the adoption, if we want to get people using cryptocurrencies, people innovating around cryptocurrencies, and then even to the extent that we're going to have blockchain technology-based uh, products and projects and innovations, we need to get the people educated. So that is what BlockX Africa is about. We are educating people on cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, so that the adoption, the drive, the innovation we've all been projecting when it comes to cryptocurrencies and its usage in Africa will so, actually so happen. Been, so basically, you know, that's you're, what you're BlockX Africa is. About crypto, and, and I want to specifically talk uh, about in Africa, because it's seen as a place where there is actually potential for cryptocurrency like real potential for crypt uh, cryptocurrency how are you finding the attitude from africans towards it africans see cryptocurrency like how do see any other form of new technology it's, it's something that's not just an african problem it's a problem with the rest of the world but the problem in africa becomes bigger because of the experiences people have had with new technology or new systems so even though there's regulation in the financial sector of um, the financial world in, in Africa, the regulations are not so effective and there are so many loopholes. So people have been victims of fraud, people have been scammed. Therefore, people do not really trust new forms of money or new forms of make, doing business or new forms of earning money. So anytime you mention cryptocurrency, people are skeptical. Um, and the mainstream media, both outside Africa and inside Africa, has not helped because most of the information about cryptocurrency that is reported is negative. A, a very basic example would be when um, an MP in Ghana, member of parliament, went to the parliament house and said, um, looking at how people have gone through scams that related to cryptocurrencies in Ghana, she thinks the parliament house should come up with regulation as soon as possible to protect the user and also for innovation in the space. Ghanaian news outlets and even some of the cryptocurrency news outlets themselves reported it differently, saying Ghanaian MP complains about um, Ghanaians being scammed by cryptocurrencies. People quoted like huge sums of money, I think 130 million, that Ghanaians have been scammed up to 130 million in cryptocurrencies in the last year. The press has a lot of influence on people when it comes to new technology so currently when it comes to cryptocurrency the interest is there the interest is very very high but people are not really sure if it's a legitimate form of currency if, if it's a legitimate form of doing things basically people know the technology exists to an extent at least people have heard what bitcoin like i've heard the word bitcoin they might not understand what it is people are interested in knowing more but they are in doubt when it comes to the legitimacy of what cryptocurrency can do what it is about and what the future looks like and cryptocurrency i know that you have african heritage i mean what do you think you know do you think crypto, crypto cryptocurrency can thrive out there this podcast has been brought to you by rhubarb media Rhubarb Media are the branding specialists behind successful crypto projects such as Pivx, Vendable and Libertaria. The Rhubarb style is both loved and respected the world over. So if you want your project to appeal to techies and everyday users alike, give Rhubarb Media a try. You cannot possibly be disappointed. Link is in the description. Yeah, from what from what I I know of Africa, the thing of Africa is it's a massive place, and there are there are very, very different very very different uh, issues and there are very different prob problems that need to be solved. But I think one of the, the good things where it does lend itself well is that with Af Africa, you do have quite a lot of soft borders mm -hmm. where commerce does quite quite comfortably travel across borders, and with traditional fiat money. 
it's usually not that easy to transact in. With something like cryptocurrency, it does get across borders well. It doesn't leave a lot of the and a lot of the unbanked are from Africa. A lot of those people who are unbanked, they do have this optional cryptocurrency. But like Alicia said, the the real problem is with uh, getting the education, and that's not just an African problem. That is a worldwide problem, and that's why it's um it's probably such a, a good thing to see that that something like Block X Africa does exist to just to increase people's educational levels as well as their awareness on cryptocurrency and help it to actually be used. I think that's, um, I think it's, it's, it's a very exciting area, definitely. And Alicia, what advice would you give to any projects trying to get traction in Africa? But uh, as crypto, he says Africa is a very big place. So particularly West Africa, where you're based. For Africa, or let's say West Africa, something you have to understand is the way marketing works um, outside of Africa is not the same way marketing might work in Africa. In Africa, uh, word of mouth matters a lot. I, I feel word of mouth matters a lot. If, if I mention a new technology and the person next to me is skeptical about it and I go around mentioning the same technology or product and people keep on showing signs of distrust. Uh, I would feel I'm on the wrong path to an extent. Basically, what I'm, that's an example. Uh, there's various examples. What I'm trying to say is, if people are entering Africa, they shouldn't come in with uh, their way of doing stuff outside of Africa. What they should do is they should study the African continent, the African market, and do things that apply to the African market specifically, because we've had people building tools, tools that work like very well outside of Africa, but then those tools might not work so well in Africa. For example, if you're building an exchange in Africa, you might think um, having an exchange that has like bank transfer is amazing, but not so many people have bank accounts in Africa. More people have mobile money accounts than bank accounts in Africa. So if you want to have lots of traction for your exchange, you'd have to do it in a different way. So basically, people have to study the African market, which means probably they have to get Africans who are on the ground. We have had so many instances where people enter the African market without an involvement of any African. I don't know how that is supposed to work, but people still try it anyway. There, there are people in the cryptocurrency industry from Africa who are ready to help, who are ready to work. And I feel new companies trying to enter the African market should work with these people in order to get the best results. That's that's the perfect thing. I think every new current um, cryptocurrency project or blockchain project entering the African market has to do. Is that sort of advice or any other advice that works for kind of any developing countries where people are wanting to get involved in crypto? Yeah, I, I think I think it's 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 for every developing like country, emerging markets. Uh, it's it's very important to have a local connection with the people like you're going to serve or you're providing the product for. If I, ask, I, I get your question correctly, so basically, I feel it's very important to always have people on the ground and not work from your office somewhere in New York or. Uh, Japan or South Korea and expect to have very good results because there are going to be other people who are going to be doing work on the ground and people are going to see and recognize their efforts and they are going to get rewarded for it than you who is like far away does not have any connection to the people you are serving and you won't have the same results. Alicia, it's been it's been really interesting to find out about you know about how things are, are working out where you are. But now, in terms of cryptocurrency in general, okay, are we out of the bear market? Um, we are almost we are almost out. We are almost out. Not entirely out yet. I feel we should uh, like take our time in pronouncement of getting out of the bear market. I I feel. There are things that we still have to like make sure happen first. Mostly, when we're talking about the bear market, we are looking at um, the price, right? Uh, the price is good. The sentiments online have been positive so far. 
So I am I don't really uh I find it difficult to talk about the price because it's it's pretty pretty like um uh, unpredictable if I should put it that way. Anything can happen. But with Libra being announced and the Bitcoin price still holding up, I feel we are almost out. When we finally cross 10k, then probably we cannot say we are out of the bear market. Yeah, so we're almost out. And crypto, yeah, I know. I know. Last week uh, with our guest, it was pretty much a, a similar sentiment, wasn't it? That you know we're nearly there. Yeah, that's that's kind of the feeling everyone's get. I I, I personally think that we're. I think we're out of it now. Uh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To date, everything's been going up. So I I I think we're past the worst of it. But. Um, you never can say never with crypto. So who, who who really knows? But at the moment, everything's looking on the up and up. And like Alicia said, w- with Facebook coming out and announcing that they're going to be stepping into crypto and the price of Bitcoin kind of holding up despite that, I, I guess it's kind of like a, a real announcement that crypto is here to stay. And this will be the run that kind of signifies that. So it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. Uh, price wise it'll be interesting to see and alicia in terms of crypto marketing how much has that come on how much has that developed since you've been involved it has developed a lot a lot uh we when i started there are very few cryptocurrency marketing firms right now there are hundreds of thousands and right now we have existing traditional marketing firms coming into the cryptocurrency market and so Right now, the marketing industry, when it comes to cryptocurrency or the marketing aspects of things, is extremely competitive, very, very competitive. And there's more money in it right now because of the ICO phase or the ICO era. The ICOs had enough money to throw around on marketing. So currently, if I should say it like this, uh, marketing companies are sports, like when it comes to like charging and taking money from people, I know the prices are not so favorable for new startups and people who are looking to like put in just a little bit, not because that's what they want to put in, but because they don't have enough. So it's 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 changed a lot. It has changed totally. And right now, it's also harder to do certain things than it was in the past. Uh, regulation has affected marketing to an extent. For example, in the past, celebrities could easily endorse ICOs. Right now, they can't really do that. For example, Centra, I had uh, Floyd Mayweather and DJ Khaled endorsing it had problems. And DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather were like called upon and questions were asked of them. So currently, things have changed. Um, but I, I think things, I like to say things have changed for the better, even though things are more expensive and things are more restricted now. Alicia, I know that you are a keen listener of uh, ITK Crypto. So you know uh, that this next question is coming, all right? If you had to go all in on a project, which would it be <laughs> and why? Only projects that have been released. Okay, so I've, I've been trying to do lots of research since I came back from school um, on projects. Currently, if I was to ask someone, and no one should take this as a like financial advice. I'm sure there'll be a disclaimer or something, but I still have to say. Um I'll I'll go all in on Devote. Devote is there's a new cryptocurrency that just came out. Uh it's it's a cryptocurrency that seeks to bring about a digital economy. Um that is based on hundred percent community governance and hundred percent community involvement. If I was to go all in on a particular cryptocurrency to be devote, because I know the developers, I know the like community members, and I've seen their work with other projects, and I have a strong feeling the project is gonna go very, go to very high places. Okay, did Cryptosi, do you know much about Devault? Spoiler alert: we should be having them on next week. So, um, yes, I do. It's only the project itself is literally only two weeks old. So, um, yeah. One of the one one of the main developers we've had on a different uh, Smart Reach show we had on Developers Corner, we had one of their main developers on there. So um, yeah, it is one that I personally have been keeping a very very close eye on. Um, 
not surprised to hear Alicia say that at all because it is it's um, quite highly rated that one. So yeah, it's it's a, a quite a, an interesting answer. Okay, yeah. Well, well, we'll look forward to that next week then. Certainly, uh, Alicia, where can people go to find out more about you? Um, okay, good. So on Twitter, I am at Twitter, Instagram. I'm at GH Crypto Guy. So G and then an H and then Crypto and then Guy. Um, if you're looking for my website, it's Elisha.info. Yeah, these places are places where you can check out more stuff about me. Fantastic. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to have you on, Alicia. Fascinating stuff. Uh, talking about how crypto is viewed out where you are. Um, and, and you've actually linked us very nicely into next week's uh, podcast as well. I didn't realize who our guest was next week. So uh, it sounds like it's going to be an absolute cracker if both you and Cryptosia are both keeping an eye on them. So, Alicia, thank you very much indeed to, to you and to you as well, Cryptosia. Thank you very much for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, thanks for coming, Alicia. Yeah, cheers, Tommy, and uh, see you next week. This podcast was brought to you by Meros Cryptocurrency. Meros is a cryptocurrency payment system that does what cryptocurrency originally intended to do. Be a practical and secure form of direct payment, Meros utilizes the best of current technology in a powerful new way. It introduces a groundbreaking consensus mechanism called Merit Caching. This enables Meros to be both fearless and instant while maintaining the same level of integrity of traditional networks like Bitcoin. To find out how you can participate in the future of crypto payments, go to meroscrypto.io now.